Hi, my name's Haki. I'm a designer, illustrator and muralist. I've predominantly worked in graphic design for 10 plus years and went freelance about, I think, three years ago. I spent most of my career um, as a designer, so a lot of print-based material, a lot of social assets. However, going freelance, I was really able to still pursue design but also mix that up with my illustration skills however i've loved murals like forever i love street art i love graffiti i think it's just such a great way um to express yourself and you know uplift communities as well and i see it as an art form and i think it's absolutely awesome and i know for many people it's the dream at the moment i've noticed is how do I get my illustrations and put them on a wall? Well, I'm here to help you with that. And this is just from the few murals that I have done over these last few years. Um, I'm still very, very new to this and I have so much to learn. But what I found when I was trying to do murals was trying to find people that would share the information or show me how it was done because that's where I was getting stuck was like I can see my design but how do I enlarge it and put it on a wall and for me that changed when I came across David who is um, part of this massive graffiti art community in London and he was painting a mural um, in Shoreditch and I stopped and was really curious because he was working in a grid form and it was all just sketched out at the beginning and I was like wow I've never seen it from the initial concept like actually being sketched out and how it's done. I stopped him, I was curious, I started talking to him like how do I do this and he was like what is your style like and I showed him my style and he was like right this is so easy and this is how you can do it. So I got a lot of advice from him, but that's because I was, you know, I went into the streets and actually like spoke to a graffiti artist. Um, so that really helped me gain the confidence to go out there and do it myself. So I'll go through step by step um, how you go about creating a mural. Um, I wish I could show you how it's done on a wall, but at the moment I haven't got anything. Um, but you'll get the idea of how to go about it and I hope it helps you in your future endeavours of creating a mural. Okay, so we'll start off with like a quick breakdown of what you'll learn today. Um, one of those is how to go about designing, um, whether you use your iPad or standard paper, that's entirely up to you, but I'll go through that. Um, what systems work, how do you then take your piece of design and get it onto a wall um, and how you go about finding wall space. That's always the big question is, how do I find wall space? Where do I begin? Uh, it's so big. Um, so bear in mind, like I said, I'm only a few years into this, um, but it's all about having a bit of confidence, having a bit of guts and then just going for it and making mistakes along the way because that's how I've done it. Um, so yeah, that's a quick breakdown of what you'll learn from this and also like the type of materials that you're gonna need. Um, so I'll quickly go through that with you and, um, and then yeah, I hope it gives you enough to then, you know, go out there and create your mural. How do I go about finding this big wall? What do I do? Um, my best advice is to begin small. So begin in your own comfort zone where you feel comfortable. That being said, that's your home. Um, there's loads of wall spaces hopefully in your home. Uh, find a space and start creating on it. Um, it's a great way to start because you have all your materials, you can make mistakes and remember walls can be painted over. So how I began, uh, I asked my landlady, uh, can I please paint on my bedroom wall? 
um, and she was totally happy with it. I had no design, it was just something in my mind. I literally had some spare spray cans, um, some acrylic paint, and I it was like a Saturday morning and I just spray painted, kind of went with it and created this random design. So my first piece was, it was just playing around. It was freehand, I didn't overthink it. It was just trying to get an idea for it. Um, if you don't have wall space, then I've seen other methods on YouTube, which you can then, you know, go have a search, go have a look, it's really easy to find. Um, people go into the woods or into areas where there's like two trees and they get cling film and they wrap the trees with cling film and will then learn how to spray paint. That's a great way to do it. I've never done it, but if you really, really wanna get into spray painting, I think that's a really good way to start because you can make all the mistakes you want to. It's just cling film and it comes off the trees. So you're not, and you're not having to go find walls. You, you know, you're not doing anything illegal um, it's totally safe and it's totally fine. Um, other methods, big large canvases like the canvas behind me, just buy the biggest canvas and practice on that. Uh, that's a great way to do it. Um, and you know, and that helps if you don't have the spaces, like, you know, anything it could be large canvases, large wooden panels, um, anything you can find that's big, use it. Like it's there for you to, you know, have fun with it. And I think that's, you have to remember to have fun with it. Um, so that's finding walls within your space, right? So you're never, there's never not a wall near you. You could ask your friend, your neighbors, anybody, and most people will be up for it. So you're building your portfolio. And when you start building your portfolio, uh, you know, people will start noticing and then they'll ask you, you know, um, I have space in a school or I have a company that needs um, a wall painted. Um, but you have to put yourself out there and I tend to put it on social or other spaces where I just ask like is there a, a wall available for me and sometimes there isn't sometimes some people put me through to people and you know they've come through slowly um, and it can be word of mouth and there's also designated spots where you can spray paint um, go do some murals um, for example a space where I've done it is in Hackney on the canal um, which is a designated space where you can just go and paint um, and do what you want just be mindful of like people's work and how you paint over stuff so I tend to find walls which are like just a bit like random stuff on it so if someone's done like a nice piece of work I stay away from that out of respect for other street artists um, especially if it's like meaningful stuff that's on there so think of the space that you're using so I will look for like spaces where it's just like like people just put other stuff on it and then I'm like okay you know what I can clean this up a bit and do something nice with it um so a few years ago I did something around climate change and it was a quote that Greta Thunberg had um said and it was just nice putting it on this wall and it got a real nice reaction so yeah find designated spaces that's a way to do it or ask um so last year 2020 i did a i am thankful for the nhs piece this was a massive massive it was like a hoarding it was huge it was long um but my friend and i were walking past it and she was like why don't you call the number um and ask the whoever the owners of the site are uh, if you could paint on this um because it had like all this random stuff on it and I was like, good idea. Anyway, I emailed the agents, I think, who were like looking after that property. They got back to me so quickly and contacted the owner of the site and were like, if the messaging is, I am thankful for the NHS, we would totally love for you to paint on this. So, you know, use your initiative, ask, you know, it's no harm in asking. People will turn you down, that's fine. But that is basically how you find wall spaces. So, you know, and if you can't, then create your own spaces. Um, and you'll get recognised and then more walls will come to you. So designing, um, you can, I don't want to limit you or feel like you are restricted because you're not. Um, if you use sketchbooks, pencils, pens, that's totally fine. It's basically the same principle will apply, apply when I get to it. Um, I, however, how I do my stuff is I use an iPad Pro. Um, and do all my illustrations and sketches and everything on this. It just makes my um, 
process much easier, much quicker. Um, and then I take that design and put it into Photoshop and then I'll grid it up. So I'll create some lines to figure out how I want to do stuff. Um, and that's how I tend to create my designs. It's super simple. But like I said, even if you have a sketchbook, it's the same principle will apply. And you can still take a photo of it if you're going to use a projector, it's no different. Um, and, you know, feel free sometimes to go freehand as well. That's okay. Like, you don't always have to be using grid systems and projectors. Um, some stuff that I've done, I've based it off creating the design, having a rough idea, and then put it onto wall and just went freehand with it. And that's also a great way to practice. Um, so it's entirely up to you, whatever you feel comfortable. You know, I'd say explore it, have fun with it. Um, and yeah, and then just go for it. Don't let things limit you because I've spent a lot of time limiting myself and thinking I had to do X, Y, and Z to create a mural, but actually it's not, um, it's not that deep. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's just one of the ways um, how I create it. iPad Pro is my way to go about it. So next up is materials. And this is, again, you know, your preference. There's people that love to use spray paints and people who use paints. Um, it's entirely how you feel comfortable. However, spray paints take a bit of practice. Um, you'll need years and years of practice to get those thin lines, get it accurate, get, you know, and um, I struggle with it still, but I know that that comes with practice. So at the moment, you're gonna see how I break down things, what I use, but I predominantly use paints. Um, that's my go-to, it's just easier for me. I feel comfortable um, and it's not too out of my depth and I can create really great work. And with my style in particular, cause it's lettering and it's very like, um, a lot's going on and on in it and small spaces and small things are happening. I find paint just an easier tool for me. Like you can see in the background, um, I just like to, Paint. It's entirely up to you how you do stuff. Um, I paint more. Um, that's because I'm comfortable painting. For anything that requires like a backdrop and stuff, I would definitely use um, spray paints um, just because they're just easier and you can, you know, get whatever you need to get down so much quicker than if you're trying to paint on. I'm still not used to using cans fully. That takes a lot, a lot of practice. However, if you do use cans, there's so many different brands. Um, think of the caps that you're using, it's fat, skinny, you know, and that will help you create your different lines and markings. One thing I would say using spray paints, make sure you always wear your protection. Um, keep yourself protected. It's just for your own health. So always use a mask. These you can pick up in any of the DIY stores or online from any of the big retailers that do spray paint. I use System 3 acrylics. They're great, heavy body, um, work indoors and outdoors, um, and they're just long lasting. You know, you can get a lot out of them. Then other things that you're gonna probably need, your standard scissors, cloths, cause it gets really messy. Make sure you have that. And then paint brushes. Um, you don't need to spend huge amounts on paintbrushes. Um, like sometimes I have spent quite a bit, uh, but you don't. You can just pick up things from your local DIY store, um, you know, like these normal brushes and the different sizes are really important um, depending on the work that you're trying to do. Um, yeah, so don't spend crazy amounts, especially if you're outdoors, they're going to get ruined. Um, you know, you're going to go through loads of paintbrushes and stuff. So that's your main tools that you'll need um, and then things like just keep masking tape any tapes any dust sheets um, to lay down make sure that paint doesn't get on the floor um, you know think of these things when you are creating your mural once you've figured out the materials that you want to use you've got your design and you found your wall it's now putting the design onto the wall i use um a grid system or I use a projector. Projector is easier. However, if you're in spaces where it's tight, can't really, you know, do a doodle grid or you can't use a projector, then a traditional grid system is the best way to do it. 
don't be afraid of these things. Um, grid system really scared me to begin with. I was like, oh God, I need to know so much maths, but you'll see in a sec. It's not that complicated and it's not that deep. Um, it's actually really easy once you figure it out and then you can really fly with it. Okay, so I'm gonna show you um, the grid system. This is not as scary as some people think it is. I was um, panicked when I heard of grid systems, but once you understand it, it's actually a really, really easy and great method. It's also great um, if you don't have like the wall space. So here's your wall, there's you. There's not much space between you and the wall, so you can't use a projector or a doodle grid. Um, so this will come into play um, when you need it. It's really easy. What you need to do is, first and foremost, is know what the size of your wall is. So in this case, for this particular project, the wall size was 240 uh, centimetres by 559 centimetres. I just broke that down to 24 centimetres, 55.9, just to like, you know, just condense it and simplify it a bit. And then this is where you have to then play around. So I got the 55.9 and then started dividing it into where I could get it to a place where I can start getting squares. So you kind of got to play around with it. Um, and I got it down to, I think it was like 18 squares across. So that was three centimetres, uh, 3.1 centimetres, sorry, width. So that's that bit there. Um, and then, you know, the height of each square, three centimetres. And then you just break it down, um, up and down. And same with the method. And that's how you break it down for the width and height of it. Once you figure that out, on your smaller piece of work you can then blow it up as much as you want and that's entirely up to you how big you want your squares i wanted them as small as possible because there's so much detail happening so i could be as accurate as possible um so mine i just kind of like you know it was 30 centimeters by 31 centimeters and to make it easier rather than having you know a ruler and then <laughs> standing there trying to calculate each you know line and stuff just cut a template simple as that cut a template to that particular size and then then once you're there on the job you just put the template on and then boom 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 make your lines and um and then from there you just follow your grid um so exactly what you see here is then what you're projecting onto your wall projectors are great also um it's another great method um to help you um, create your murals and also a very easy way so I have used this once for one of my pieces of work however you do need space between wall and what's behind you because the further back you take this um, the better it is um, to get the correct projection across a wall um, that's when these guys come into play and it makes your life so much easier they're really really easy you know you can just plug your phones in um, so all you have to do is grab a phone, take a picture, for example, of this artwork, you know, attach your phone to it, and then just, it's really easy to set up and then put it up against the wall through the projection. Um, it has slight tilt, so you can just tilt it a bit, you know, and adjust it slight, like slightly. Um, it does need a bit of fiddling when you're there to make sure that you get the correct, um, like, you know, it's correctly projected. Sometimes you will need, like, actually for all of this, the grid system, uh, all of it, like, always find out the exact size of your wall. It just makes your life easier. However, if you can't, then, you know, just make sure the artwork not flushing out right against the walls. If you've got something that's really simple and stays within, then, yeah, this, this will work as well. So this is also a great method. Once you figure out what system you want to use, whether that's the projector, the do your grid or your traditional grid system, it's then a matter of fact putting it on the wall. Um, and like I said, it's so easy. Um, projectors, it's just projecting it, you know, and then you just follow it. Grab a pencil and just follow that style. Um, same with the grid system. Once your grid is up there, you're literally following the grid that you have on your piece of paper, the grid on the wall and then pencil it out. And then you can get into transferring it all across the wall and then go for it. Um, but also, if you wanna go freehand on a wall, there's no harm in doing that. Like I've done that in the past where I've done things freehand. 
that's a good way to do it because you make mistakes you get a sense of like how paint works how spray paints works and you just get a bit more confident in using all these different materials it's just a matter of them bringing it together and then i'd say don't be afraid um it's it is daunting like of course it's daunting when you are creating something so big most of all have fun with it um and yeah just enjoy yourself like mistakes are gonna happen i've made so many mistakes um there was one wall where they sent me their dimensions and i you know designed my piece of work to it and then when i went up to the wall to put my grid up i was a few squares short and i had more squares in my design and that threw me a bit but when I was there, I was like, well, there's nothing I can do. They sent me the wrong dimensions. Now I need to just go wing it. So part of my design, I had to wing it and just break it down. And it still turned out pretty awesome. So the cool thing is it's such a big space that you can have fun with it um, and enjoy yourself with it. Your last step is obviously applying the paint. Um, like I said, I don't spray paint, um, I use paints. However, if it's like a space that I'm trying to color block at the back, then spray paints are definitely the way to go. It just saves you time, they're easy to carry rather than carrying loads of, you know, big buckets of paint and stuff. You know, you can just grab a few cans, block it out. Um, as for your paint, you know, just keep in mind that you've got everything that you need um, you can clean out your brushes constantly just keep a clean area make sure you are laying out things like you know your dust sheets or something on the floor to protect the areas you know mask off areas where you don't want paint to get onto um, if you're outdoors it's much easier like you know if you're on the canal or somewhere painting um, but if you're in your home just be mindful of the areas that you're um, that are surrounding you and whether people are coming in and out of the area you know make sure you have your step ladders um, that's really important if climbing high to get to spaces you know there's loads on amazon which you know you can push down really small and then you know they can extend really um long so you can get to higher spaces um, you just need to make sure that everything you carry is easy for you um and especially paints will be the most heaviest thing so think about it that's why you use system three acrylics they're just small you actually get a lot of paint out of it onto your brushes onto the wall as well and you'll still have loads left over um you know if needs be and always make sure with paints buy more than you actually need because i have been caught out numerous times for not having enough paint <laughs> so i need to get better at that um so yeah i hope that has helped you on your journey to creating murals um, it's not as scary as it seems and wall spaces are all around you you just need to ask um, and people are more than willing to give you a space and remember like I said you know those walls and doors can be um, painted over and if not like I said canvas is a great way to also start you know your painting skills so yeah I hope that helps you I hope you've enjoyed this um, and I hope it gives you an idea of what to do and I can't wait for you to go create your own mural. Woohoo! Go do it!